In this video, I'm going to talk about hybridizing daylilies. I'm going to talk about what that is, and we're going to go through five steps to hybridizing beautiful new daylily varieties. So, hybridizing daylilies means crossing two different daylily varieties together to make a new seed, which will be a new and distinct variety. Okay, a hybrid is different from a species daylily, which you don't see many species daylilies around. They're not offered in the trade, except for the roadside daylily, which is Hemercalis fulva, like this one here. And uh, you may see it along the roadsides in your area, uh, and this one is available for sale at places. Uh, one thing about the species that I always like to point out is um, this one in particular, and maybe some of the other species, I'm not sure, but retains the trait that it will spread underground. So it can be a little bit uh, almost invasive. It's not very fast, but over time it can definitely fill in and, and creep on you. The hybrids, which is what almost everybody sells, which is what we sell, uh, are, don't have that trait. So they're a clump and they're not going to spread like that. But I always like to show the species because, you know, look at this. It's kind of a, you know, whatever. It's pretty in its own way. It's kind of this burnt orange color. Uh, and the other species, daylilies, there are some that are yellow and uh, maybe some that are a little more orange or, or similar to this color. But from those few pretty humble beginnings of the species daylilies, over the years, uh, folks have created a huge range of daylily colors. There's literally tens of thousands of daylily varieties have been created over the years. Uh, pretty much every color except for blue. There are short, tall, big flowers, small flowers, uh, ruffled edges, eye zones. You know, you take a look at our website and you can see just all the different variety that's available. I always kind of like to say that it's kind of a testament to the uh, American can-do spirit because they started with, with this and ended up with this and beautiful big flowers and just, you know, like I mentioned, everything under the sun. So that's what hybridizing is. It's taking two different varieties and putting them together to create something new. Okay, so the first step in hybridizing daylilies is that you probably want to think about what you want to try and create. Now, a lot of folks start with they just want to create something pretty, and that's fine. But if you give a little thought to it, you might think about it and say, you know what, I really like yellow ones, or I like big flowers, or I like small flowers, or I like the double blooms, or the spiders. Uh, and that kind of gives some direction uh, to what you want to do with your hybridizing program. Now, I say program. This is supposed to be fun. So you can put as little effort into it or thought into it as you want to, but that may be something you want to think about, what, what you want to work towards. All right, so the second step to hybridizing is decide which varieties you want to cross. Now, uh, this kind of depends upon what you're maybe working towards, if you've picked out a goal that you want to work towards. Now, a lot of folks just cross pretty on pretty, and there's nothing wrong with that. This is supposed to be fun. But let's say, for instance, that you uh, wanted to uh, create some more uh, reblooming varieties. That's a, a popular trait in daylilies, uh, varieties that will bloom and then bloom again. Well, you're probably going to start with something that's a rebloomer. Uh, it's kind of common sense. You know, if you start with a rebloomer, you're more likely to get, uh, you know, some kids that are rebloomers. You know, likewise, if you start with a big red flower, you're more likely to get some kids that are red flowers, etc. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting. This is a variety we we sell called uh, whatchamacallit, uh, and its parents are Stella Dioro. Uh, and this is not Little Fat Dazzler, but it looks like Little Fat Dazzler. Uh, and so these two were the parents, and it created this one. So you can kind of see they're all three small flowers, and they all share the trait that they're very good rebloomers. Uh, Little Fat Dazzler is not necessarily an awesome rebloomer, but Stella's are one of the best ever, and whatchamacallit's one of our other really uh, best rebloomers. So that's the idea. You pick some things that have the traits that you want to work towards. Okay, so one other thing to keep in mind as you're selecting varieties to cross is that daylilies can either be diploids or tetraploids, and this has to do with the number of chromosomes. Uh, tetraploids have twice as many as the diploids, uh, and you can only cross diploids with diploids or tetraploids with tetraploids. Um, and we mark everything uh, in our catalog and on the website. It'll have a little asterisk next to the description if it's a tetraploid. Uh, now, if you're just picking out varieties for your garden, it doesn't really make much difference. Uh, you can't really tell just by looking which one's which. But if you're hybridizing, you'll need to keep that in mind. Okay, so after you've decided what varieties you want to cross, uh, you're going to actually do the make, make the actual cross, and there's not a whole lot to it. Okay, so here is a bloom. This is uh, Barbara Mitchell. 
Okay, and you can see it's got the, the one long pistol and a whole bunch of stamens. Okay, and so what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the stamens. You can see it's got the pollen on the tip there. Okay, it's kind of damp this morning, so it's not as fuzzy as it would be on a dry day. But on a dry day, this would be nice and fuzzy, kind of falling off. And what you're going to do is you're going to dab this onto the pistol. Okay, so this would be a lot yellower if it was drier. But in any case, you get the idea. Okay, so this one here, obviously I'm crossing it against itself, so it's probably going to be something that looks similar to that. But, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, your idea for your perfect cross will come up with something that's, uh, you know, interesting. So if this cross is successful, uh, after this bloom closes up uh, this evening, uh, and then when it starts to, uh, you know, get old and fall off, in its place will come a seed pod, okay? I don't have a sample of that yet, but a seed pod looks a lot like a bud does, except it's rounder. All right, and you'll know it when you see it because it's obviously not opening up. It's, you know, round like a golf ball. Uh, and what you're gonna wanna do is wait until that ripens. And, and you'll know it's ripe when it starts to crack open. It'll turn kind of brown and start to crack open. And you wanna harvest that before it cracks open and get the seeds out. If you wait too long, the seeds will fall out on the ground and you'll lose them. All right, and so the last step after you've harvested your seeds is um, a couple things. You have choices you could do here. Uh, some folks will go ahead and plant the seeds uh, in the same summer, all right? Or other folks will put them in the freezer over the winter and plant them in the next spring. And this kind of depends on where you live and how much time you've got. Uh, if you live further north and you're not harvesting the seeds until, you know, say August or late July, you may not have enough time to get those going and, to, and you may just want to wait and plant those in the spring. But you know, if you're further south and you're harvesting the seeds in uh, July and you still got several months, go ahead and plant them. Uh, and they'll have time to get, you know, uh, come up and, and get enough growth on them to survive the upcoming winter. Uh, and then the hard part is just the wait to see what it looks like. Uh, you folks down in the south may be lucky enough to get blooms the first year, but it's probably going to be the second year before you get much good bloom. Uh, and then uh, you folks up north in our area here in Tennessee, it's almost at least two years before you see much bloom, and maybe even the third year before you see what it's really going to look like. But it's kind of like a treasure hunt when you go out in your seedling patch and you get to look through and see you know, what surprises come up. Uh, so there's a lot of fun to hybridizing. You know, it's something, something you might want to try. So uh, over the years, uh, we have introduced, hybridized and introduced uh, a little over 20, 25 varieties or so. It was mostly my grandfather that uh, did that. Uh, and uh, I wish I had time to do it now, but I can't seem to find time in my schedule to do it. Uh, but uh, those are listed on our website under Oaks Intros. Uh, Red Volunteer is one of our more famous ones. It's All-American Selection. Starstruck is another All-American Selection. So be sure and check those out.